Welcome to the formatting video. In this video, we'll cover some of the many formatting options available to you in Tableau, such as row banding, shading, annotations, labeling, and tooltip formatting. Feel free to download the Companion Workbook to follow along. Let's get started. I'd like to first begin by building out a cross tab. I want to look at my regional sales for each of my categories. So I'm going to drag out product category and subcategory. Then I'll drag out my sales and just throw that onto text. So to access my formatting menu, I can right click anywhere on my view here and select format. And that'll bring up the format menu here on the left. Or I can go to the format menu from the top toolbar and select my formatting options from here. Now that we have the formatting menu open, let me describe some of these different icons here. The A is for font formatting, where you can adjust font style and size and add bold or italics or underlined. The alignment icon is for alignment. The paint bucket is for shading for sheets and row banding. The borders icon is for adding borders and row dividers or column dividers. And the paintbrush is for modifying lines, such as grid lines, zero lines, your drop lines, all of those things. Each of these tabs represents the scope of my changes. For example, I can have my changes affect the entire sheet, just my rows, or just my columns. Similarly, this field dropdown will allow me to apply my changes to a specific field if I choose. So if I select region, I can now format just the text for the region dimension. All right, now that we've talked about this formatting menu, let's actually start doing some formatting. So the first thing I want to do is apply some row banding to my crosstab. So notice that there is actually formatting present on my crosstab right now uh, in terms of row banding. You can see it's very light. So I'm going to modify that a little bit. I'll go to my paint bucket and I'll go down to row banding. So currently it's a very light shade of gray. I can make that a bit darker. Uh, and I also want that to apply to my header, so I'll adjust that as well. Uh, I can also adjust the band size. Currently it's set to uh, different, each row is a different shade. I can set that to every two rows or every three rows and so on. I can also adjust the level of my row banding. Right now it's set to level two. There's only two options here and that's only that's because I only have two levels, product category and product subcategory. Subcategory is my second level. If I set that to the first level, my banding will affect my product category. And that's what it would look like. So I'll stick with this option and that looks pretty good to me. Now that I've got my row banding out of the way, let's talk about some number formatting. Notice that I have two decimal places for my current sales values. Let's say I want to get rid of those decimal places and also add a dollar sign to these numbers because we are talking about a currency value. So to do that number formatting, we want to go to the fields drop down here and select sum of sales because notice that we're, we want to modify that, the formatting for that value. And from here, we'll want to go to the numbers menu. And because we want to change this to a currency type, we'll change it to currency. We can select standard or custom. Standard will allow us to select our locale, and custom will allow us to change the number of decimal places, change how negative values are represented, change our units, and add a suffix or a prefix. In this case, I want zero decimal places, and I want my units to be the thousands units. So from this menu, I can also adjust the font. So maybe I want to change the font style to um, something else and maybe make it bold and also adjust the sizing here as well. So I actually don't like this font so I'm going to change it uh, to Calibri and also change the color of my font to green. Before I go further uh, the row banding is bothering me a little bit. I want it to be a little bit lighter so I'll adjust that as well. Okay so I'm pretty happy with the way things are looking now. Now that we've seen how Tableau formats numbers and fonts, let's see how we can format our visualizations to give our charts some voice. So I'm going to move on to the next sheet. And from here, I'm going to create a, a quick time series. So I'll just throw uh, my sales up onto my rows and my order date onto my columns. 
and I want to see this by product category so I'm going to throw that onto color and I'll change this to an area chart and let's increase the granularity of this a bit we'll look at months okay so in this time series we can see that there are some peaks and some dips so let's assume that I know why these peaks and dips are occurring for example maybe I know that this peak uh, occurred because it was from a Black Friday sale uh, and so we have that peak in November um, but let's say my my colleagues don't know that and I want to annotate this mark in some way uh, so they can see that so what I can do is right click and go to annotate and I can choose to annotate this this exact mark or maybe this point so I'm, I'll, do, I'll explain what the difference is between marks mark annotations and point annotations in just a minute uh, for now I'll just set this to a uh, point annotation and uh, if I just hit OK with the default it'll just label this point with an arrow pointing directly to that point with the uh, description, a brief description of what that point is in terms of the fields uh, in this case date and sale. So if I double click that I can edit it to say um, Black Friday sale and format this however I like maybe I'd like it to be a little bit larger and I'll change that to a bluish color and so now my end users when seeing this will say oh okay that must be from the Black Friday sale also notice that I can select the the mark the point that this arrow is pointing at and move it around to wherever I want I'm gonna keep it on that peak for now now I'm going to create a mark annotation for this dip here and I'll just call this low sales and I'll make that red and a little bit larger so notice a couple things here first of all I can't move this mark to wherever I want I can make the arrow shorter but I can't actually move it it's it's always uh, it's basically assigned to this particular mark here uh, March of 2011 uh, so the next thing I want to show you is what watch what happens when I create a quick filter just to show you how uh, these two different types of annotations differ functionally. So I'm going to change this to a list type. Uh, notice that the, the point annotation actually disappeared. and I can cycle through, but that low sales annotation there, that mark annotation is still there. That's because that annotation is signed always to March of 2011. It's always going to be pointing there. But this point annotation is pointing just to this particular mark on the scatter plot, which is uh, a height of 500,000 um, in, in November of 2012. It's always going to be pointing to this point on the coordinate axes. So if I actually adjust this, just to demonstrate, if I adjust this up to uh, you know, 600,000, we're going to see Black Friday sales still pointing at the same point on our chart. So that's how those two uh, annotation types differ functionally. Uh, something for you to keep in mind as you do your analysis. Now the last chart uh, annotation that I've yet to talk about is the area annotation. So I'll just clear this axis range and demonstrate how to create that. So you want to go into your annotation menu, select area, and I'll just call attention uh, to a particular area of my chart. Now size this a little bit larger, make it red. And it essentially creates a box in a particular area of my chart. So I can move this to wherever I like. And right click, I can format the shading, add some transparency, um, maybe adjust the border a little bit as well, make that dotted. There we go. So now we have this annotated area. And this annotated area functions just like the point annotation, it's tied to this area of the chart, no particular marks in general, just the area of the chart. Now let's say I want to see some labels on this chart. I want to see uh, maybe a label, uh, the actual sales value on this time series. So to do that, there, there are a couple ways to do that. I can first, um, the first way is to just show mark labels and that's going to just show all the sales values uh, for my marks. Notice that it's not every single sales value. Uh, it's Tableau is very smart about how it does this. It's not going to show everything because it's just going to be way too cluttered and you won't be able to read any of the numbers. So it's going to show 
Uh, it's going to intelligently select which ones you might be interested in, such as the peaks and those dips. So I'm going to turn that back off for now and show you the other way to do that. Uh, another way I can do it is simply by taking sales and dropping down to the label. And you can see it's the same thing, but now I can customize how I want that label to appear. So right now it's assigned to all, and here's what I was talking about earlier. You can see Tableau will uncheck this box by default. It's not going to allow labels to overlap. If I check that, uh, now you can see what I was talking about. This is not very uh, intuitive. You can't really read any of the numbers. It just doesn't look good at all, so leave that unchecked. Uh, you can modify the text to however you like, uh, format it, maybe make the marks bold, um, change the font, the size, the alignment. Uh, you could even have your labels appear just when you select them. So if I select a mark, that label will appear. Um, I could also have the, the marks appear when I highlight a particular category. Uh, that's not that's also pretty cluttered so I don't want that or maybe just the minimum and the maximum value notice that when I select that more options appear for how I want to customize my min slash max value currently you can see it's it's applying to the whole chart what's my maximum sale and what's my minimum sale for for all three product categories across my entire uh, time series I can change this and say I want it to occur for each product category. What's the minimum maximum for each product category, each line? And I can change uh, this based on my field too. Maybe I just want to see it for my maximum and my minimum order date. Or maybe for each product category or maybe just all of my sales overall. So many different ways to customize how you want your labels to appear. Maybe you just want that maximum value or maybe just the minimum value. It's all up to you. Now, instead of dragging the sales value out onto label, I could have dragged profit or any other measure for that matter onto my label shelf to have those labels appear on my chart. So maybe I want to see profit instead of my sales. So you can really take any measure and label it on your chart regardless of what you're looking at um, as your main measure. So in this case I'm looking at sales, I can have anything labeled uh, as text. So once again, Tableau giving you the, the power to really customize your chart to the way you'd like. Now you may have noticed that I don't have grid lines on my chart so if I want to add those, very easy to do, I can just right click on my chart, uh, select format, go to my paintbrush because I want to modify lines and you can see grid lines currently set to none. I can change that, maybe I want a dotted line, uh, change the thickness accordingly however I like. Notice that I only have row grid lines right now and that's because I'm making my changes to the row tab. If I go to the sheet tab this will apply to the entire sheet so now I'll have grid lines on my rows and columns. So that covers labeling and grid lines. There are a couple things, more things I want to mention about labeling uh, and I'll explain that in the next sheet. So go to my next sheet here and from here I'm going to build out a quick tree map, so I'll take sales and drop down to size, make sure it's a square type, and drag region onto color, so each color represents a different region. And also drag region onto label so I can see which region is which. Now one of the uh, new features we have with labeling is we can actually apply uh, multiple fields to uh, a particular mark in terms of labeling. So in this case I want to see sales under my region, so I'll throw that onto label and I'll just go into my labels menu here and modify the text for this. I'll say sales and I'll just uh, I'll bold region and make that a little bit larger. So we can see uh, we can throw additional labels onto the same mark. Now be before we move on to formatting tooltips I want to show you a quick cool feature. Uh, if I take state each of my states falls into a particular region, so maybe I want to see uh, each of my states in this tree map as well. I can take state, drop that onto my level of detail, and that's going to create a box for each of my states, right? Now what if I want each state colored from lightest to darkest based on sales? So what I can do is change this to a color type, and now we're going to get a color for each state but we're still, central is still colored blue, east is still colored orange, so we're still following that color theme for the regions. We just have state data in there now. Now I'll sort my states by the sales amount, and so now we have a pretty cool chart 
showing how each of our states is performing in terms of sales within each region. And Tableau has colored our states in, in such a way that we, we actually preserve that regional information um, by preserving that color scheme. So now that we have our marks labeled, uh, it's kind of redundant to have a tooltip that says uh, our region and our sales. So we can modify what shows up in our tooltip by going to the dashboard sheet, I'm um, sorry, the worksheet menu, and going to the tooltip selection here. This will bring up the, uh, the uh, window for modifying our tooltip. So here we can change the, the rich text formatting however we like. Uh, we don't need region, so I'm going to delete that. We can keep state in there. We don't need sales. Uh, maybe I just want the state um, centered right in the middle. So I can, I can add some additional things to this, like uh, this is the uh, state of, um, and then the state will appear here in this tag. And I'll make this a little bit larger. And we'll have state um, appear in italics. So we can get a little preview of that, so that's what it's going to look like. And uh, I don't need the command buttons in there that keep only in the exclude. Uh, I don't need those selections there, so I'm going to uncheck that. And now when I hover over something, it's going to show my tooltip. So you can format your tooltips however you like. Um, whatever additional information you want to show in that tooltip, go ahead and edit that tooltip and, and put that in there. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention about tooltips is you can insert additional tags. So if I decide I want sales back in there or region, I can have those appear by, by just simply putting it into this window. Uh, now what appears here in terms of the tags is dictated by what's on your view. So I only have region, state, and sales on my view, so that's why those are only available here. If I want, if I later decide I want profit in my view, I can just drag profit onto level of detail or just somewhere on my view, uh, and then when I go into tooltip, I'll have that option available as well. So this is the state of, of blank, uh, and maybe I'll say profit of, and then insert the profit tag here, and I'll color this maybe green. So a little preview, there we go. Let's see, state of Illinois, profit of 127,000. Great, looks good. So that wraps up our intro training on formatting. You've seen how Tableau allows you to customize the look and feel of your visualizations. And I encourage you to get creative and also check out our website and Tableau Public for some great examples of how other people have used formatting.